Right, I've come out for a little mooch. There's no camping or anything because we're on lockdown. Pheasant. Wood ears and they're frozen. These are frozen, look at that. You having that? Look at that, looks like a lug, doesn't it? So yeah, that's our first stop. We've got these wood ears, they're a bit frozen, but I can, we can thaw them out. We can thaw a herd. We can thaw the thunderer. We can Ronnie thaw bit them out. I'll show you what to do with them when I get back to the Fungarium, but we'll carry on mooching around these woods and see what else we can find. Poppermint sandwich box. Some lovely specimens. Wonderful. I've seen a few juvenile little baby ones of these these are more what i'm looking for a lovely winter mushroom these are what i was looking for the velvet shank so i'm gonna see if i can find a few more we'll put them with the wood ears pop them in here what i'll never stop doing that i don't think i'll take it back to the fungarium and do some further studies uh both mycological and culinary <laughs> Culinary studies on it. But let's see if we can find a few more. Oh, yes, mate. What a lovely crop of oysters. They're frozen solid, as you can hear. But that is a lovely crop. Show you a knife, because to be honest, mate, every time I get a chance to show this knife, I'm gonna. Is it overkill to bring out for mushroom foraging? No, it isn't, because it brings me great joy. Beautiful. Harvest some of these, well, as many as we can, really. Oysters, the gills go all the way to the, the root there. And these don't grow on the tree, they've actually got the roots that go into the tree, running out of room. Running out of shroom in my uh, my little Tupperware box, so they're gonna have to go. You're gonna have to bare back them into its actual. My little notebook, look. Yeah, it's pink, but I'm comfortable with it. I am comfortable with it. Enjoy it, in fact. So that's good, isn't it? Look at us go, lads. Look at us go. I'm just gonna put these in bag. Just straight up have them, man. Straight up have them. Because these are great eating. We'll put them in the bag. I can sort them out later. He's having them all. He's having them all. <laughs> Cheers, Mother Nature. Tell you what, we'll have a feast. Bag's nearly full. Welcome to the Fungarium anyway, this is the, what we call the mushroom. Uh, it's just got mushroom art, it's got all my mushroom foraging books, uh, dried mushrooms on there, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a bit. And it's even got my whale spine, I don't know if you can see down there. Um, 
that's my whale spine. That's another story altogether. Let's have a look what we've got from today's expedition. Look at that. They're frozen, but they'll thaw out. Thaw come and wise. Also, as if you're never gonna not do that. Look, that, just tell me that doesn't look like a lug. Look at that. Another one to be found on the trees. And then, so we've got quite a few of them. I'll show you what to do with these. And then we've got the, the velvet shanks. You can see there. See, I know these are velvet shanks because I've foraged them and eaten them before, but for those that are new to the game and that are foraging, um, just be careful. These do have some deadly, uh, deadly lookalikes. Uh, the only, the good thing is that they're not out in, uh, they don't come out in winter. So that's how I know that these are what I'm looking for. You want to look out for the funeral bell, which is, it looks pretty similar to that. I'll put some pictures up now. You, they could be mistaken for the sulfur tuff, but that has like olivey green gills underneath. And these are the white when they're young. I found some young ones today, and then they change into this sort of this yellowy colour. If you bring them home and you're not 100% sure, you can do a spore test with it. Take off the stems, and then what you want to do is you want to drop a little bit of water on top of the mushroom, pop it on your paper or whatever you've got to go at which is a good one. Let's find a good specimen. That's a good one. With the glass over the top, and we're gonna leave that there, and we'll come back and we'll check that tomorrow. With the wood ears, I would not recommend uh, frying these. If you're gonna cook them, I would dry them out. So, and I'll show you how we do that here. Thread them all, thread them all onto a piece of cotton or string or whatever. Um, a little bit like um, Universal Soldier with ears around neck. And then just hang them by your fireplace or above your radiator or put them on, t on newspaper on top of your radiator, somewhere warm where they're going to dry out and lose all that moisture. I've got some here that, that are just um, that I did a while ago actually. And you can see, you can hear how dry they are. Brilliant. And they do wonders in sort of like, I don't know, like a Japanese broth or a, a soup, um, ramen, anything like that. It can also be used as like a gelatin sort of thickening agent, vegan. A lot of people cover them in chocolate, boozy chocolate, and have them as sort of a desserty thing. This is oyster and hedgehogs. So, oh, it smells delicious as well. And this is one of the oysters that has dried out. So that's what it did look like. And this is what it looks like now solid but you pop that in some water and um, it'll rehydrate it and it makes an amazing stock the flavor is intensified and there we have a, a hedgehog mushroom <sighs> right it's the next day Let's check this spore print and see what color it is. We're hoping for white and that's what you want um, from your velvet shank. So let's have a look. Remember we just dropped a little bit of water on, popped the glass over the top and popped it on here. So let's have a see. What we're looking for is this. That's the spore print of the velvet shank. And as you can see it is white, which is a, a thumbs up. And that's all its spores that it's dropped over. Just left it overnight. You can leave it sometimes just up to two hours and they can vary in colours. And you can make nice artwork with it. Um, different coloured backgrounds with different mushrooms. But let's be honest, it looks like a ghost's ass, doesn't it? It looks like, you know, if, if an ass had died, that's its ghost. And that's, that's just a fact. So we know that that is 100% of velvet shank and good eating. These are the jelly ears from yesterday, which were huge and they've shrunk down. You can hear them and there you go. I just like to, I'm not gonna show you, but I just like to put on the label, the date, and where they were foraged 
which little wood I got them from or or whatever. So then I know, you know, just for future reference, it's quite nice. While we're on this mushroom tip, some chaga, which is a bracket fungus, which has all sorts of health properties. And you can just shave a little bit off, mix it with your coffee. And yeah, you're good to go with that wonderful stuff. And these, and these pictures that my granddad drew with a pencil, my late granddad drew with a pencil of uh, Whitby where I, was, where I was brought up. So they're pretty cool. Right, so just to finalize, so this is the winter foraging. So these are free mushrooms that you can get when you go winter foraging. They're easily identifiable, the, the velvet shanks. You're not gonna get much like this this time of year. Any other time of year, just be, just tread with caution, double check, triple check. Some good books, three that I use. The Roger Phillips one, Collins Gem, which is good for, uh, go on focus. That's a good for your field notes, so take that one out with me. And then this one, which is the River Cottage handbook, which I just love, I just, I think it's just, it's just wonderfully written. There's a lot of personality that comes through on this one and it's got some pretty cool recipes in it as well. So if ever I find a mushroom and I'm not showing it, you can just bring it back home and just have a little read through your books and uh, make some notes on it. Let's go outside, it's actually just snowed. So we'll go outside in the snow. I'll set up my little stove and we'll cook up all three of these mushrooms and we'll see what they're like. And we'll try cook up some fresh wood ears and just to see why you shouldn't cook them or fry them. Out in snow, mate, on decking. <laughs> Why not? Right, in they go. These are the, these are the woodies. Start the old spalted birch spatula that I made at Spoonfest, even though it's frowned upon to make anything other than spoons at Spoonfest. I went off piece, mate. I went rogue. So volatile at first, man. I can't. If you cook them indoors, you have to stand well back and be prepared for the fat to go everywhere. Get this egg in. A real egg, mate. Put colour on that. It's even got egg shit on it. <laughs> egg shit. It's even got bird shit on it, so it's the real deal. Look how bright the yolk is. is just some buttered bread with a bit of brown sauce on it. Leave that in the snow to cool. Look at that for an egg banjo. So the yolk's coming out, look at that. I don't know if you've heard them being called egg banjos before, but I grew up with them being called egg banjos. I never really knew why. <laughs> but apparently it's because um, 
when workmen used to have them, or however, when, yeah, when workmen used to have them, and they'd spill all egg on the, the, the egg had run down, they'd go like that, and it looked like they'd be playing a banjo, apparently. Right, let's get tucked in. Oh man, I'm fasting as well at the moment, so this is breaking my fast, so it's extra tasty. Mm. So much more earthy and mushroomy than a shop-bought mushroom, obviously. Mm. <laughs> and something that you can do, you know, if you're on lockdown, you can do it... You can, you can go on your hike or your walk, just find a dead bit of wood, they grow outside of decking or park benches, anywhere there's a bit of scrubland or anything, pick a few off, make a little snack, something to do during lockdown. <laughs> I hope you're all okay and still fighting the good fight and I'll see you soon. Ciao for now.